Well, hello there and welcome back. This is episode 41 of my Minecraft 1.15 Let's Play. I'm here at the bedrock floor of the perimeter that I've been setting up and I'm still finding quite a few spawnable blocks down here in the bedrock floor. And if you stayed here overnight, it's quite obvious there are quite a few mobs that are still spawning in this bedrock floor. So that's that's not any good. I've ran this machine quite a few extra times and it hasn't removed all the blocks yet. And now I accidentally triggered it from the wrong side. So these are out of sync. So I can't run it any further. So I've got a bit of a problem. I honestly, I probably should have gone with a flat bedrock. It probably would have been a little bit easier to manage, but I do have a solution. So the flying machine bombers that I used at the very beginning of my last episode were actually modeled after this design. So the only difference is that these observers here are pointed in different directions. But other than that, the design is basically identical. The major, other major difference is these takeoff and return stations up here. So my flying machine bomber just moves back and forth. It's not really interested in all this mechanics to make it move downward. So it actually makes for a much more simple uh, take off and return station. It's actually just a few blocks on each side. So what I can do is I can change the direction of these uh, observers here, set up take off and return stations on each side, and then these flying machines will just move back and forth without moving downward. And that allows you to run it like 100, 200 times and let the randomness of the TNT just hit a wider swath of blocks over time if you just let it run for a good long while. Now that isn't gonna necessarily be enough. What I'm actually gonna need to do is set up another bomber here right in between these two. There's actually just enough room to set up another bomber so that I'll basically have TNT blowing up every third block. And then that plus the randomness, that should actually, I've had good experiences with that. I've actually done it quite a bit. And in my experience, it actually blows up every single block, even deep inside of the bedrock. Everything non-bedrock down there is gonna go if I set that up. So uh, let's let's do that. So I ran these flying machines for a few hours. That's probably way more than is necessary, but I was just kind of AFK anyways, and I wanted to make darn sure that there's no spawnable blocks anywhere in this area. So I've been hanging out here a few nights, and then I spent a few nights flying around just looking to see if anything spawned. And as far as I can tell, I'm pretty sure that there is nothing spawnable anywhere in this bedrock. So that's great. That means it's time to start building this witch farm. Now, one thing I will say is that I definitely should have gone for the flat bedrock thing. I don't think it's super easy to go that route. I mean, you still, there's a large area that you need to put a lot of lights into and then you need to find all the slime chunks and button them all up. But I do think while that isn't trivial, it's probably a great deal easier than resetting up all these flying machines. Fortunately, I know how to do these by heart and I actually do enjoy making them. So it worked out well for me, but if you were doing this for yourself for your own perimeter, I definitely recommend just going for the flat bedrock thing. I think it's not easy, but I think it's a lot easier. All right, so with that out of the way, it's time to set up the witch farms.
right, I've got the witch farms all set up and I'm using my new shulker box loader as the storage for it. This shulker box loader was designed for mom farms, so it's a really good fit for this type of farm. One of the nice things that I can do is that if I don't want to store an item, like I've already got four shulker boxes of spider eyes, I can just not put a shulker box there and I can always change my mind later. And if I place a shulker box there, it'll just start loading up the items. And it's even got a double chest back here of storage, just in case I change my mind, it'll start loading those up immediately. And I did the same for sugar over here. It's not particularly useful, but maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe something will change in the game later, like I did for glass bottles. These are now useful for honey so they didn't used to be very useful so but now I want to keep them so that might change for sugar at some point in the future so you know we've got a decent amount of sugar here and we can always start loading it into shulker boxes if things change and then sticks I actually have already saved four shulker boxes full of sticks these are actually pretty useful for crafting uh, but I don't know if I need more than four shulker boxes right now but I can always change my mind later and then gunpowder this is now my fourth gunpowder farm so I did load up a couple shulker boxes but I don't need another source of gunpowder really the real business end is right here so we've already got two shulker boxes of redstone and two shulker boxes of glowstone and then these two are almost full now as ready as well so yeah that's the storage that seems to be working pretty well as far as the witch farm itself goes, it's actually a fairly simple shifting floor design by Il Mango. It did not take long at all to set these up. It took much longer to set up everything else up around it. So basically not a lot to say about these. The witches spawn, the floor shifts out from under them, and then they die via falling damage. So fairly simple design really. Someone was asking in the comments about using a nether portal based farm for this type of witch farm. And I really like that sort of outside of the box thinking. Unfortunately, it's just not a very good fit for this type of farm. As you can see, it's not a super fast farm. I mean, it's fast for a witch farm but compared to other farms like we've got maybe 20 witches in the world at any given point in time and out of a mob cap of 70 we are just never going to hit that mob cap and the reason that nether portal farms work so well is they free up the mob cap very very quickly so if we're not hitting it it really just doesn't provide any kind of benefit it just adds some unnecessary complications the real bottleneck here is the number of spawning spaces that we have available which is why quad witch farms work so well you just kind of quadrupling the number of spawning spaces available and here we've got a double witch farm as the other one is over here so yeah we're just kind of doubling the number of spawning spaces so it makes it twice as fast but unfortunately nether portals just don't really wouldn't really benefit in it anyway i really do like that kind of thinking though you know not every idea will end up in a new new farm or anything like that but it's that kind of thinking that gets us there in the first place so I really didn't want to use the standard glass water channels that I've used so many times before. It just really gets kind of boring after a while. So I went with a trapdoor kind of water piping thing here. And I think this looks pretty interesting. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of options for trapdoors. I really wanted to use iron trapdoors. But there's just not really anywhere to hide the power sources when you're doing something like that because the ones the ones that are flat on the tops those work fine but on the sides like you need a power source to get those to to move properly so that didn't work very well and i think the pure acacia was a bit too much in my last build so i went with acacia and oak just kind of a mix of the two of them and i think that's pretty interesting i might want to come back in the future once 1.6 1.16 comes around there's some interesting new trapdoors so those might make for an interesting mix maybe the warp trapdoors might look pretty cool but for now i think this is pretty neat looking so i've got a bit of cleanup that i still need to do you may have noticed that there's still a flying machine out there i did remove sections from the middle on both sides because those were spawnable from the center here so i needed to remove those in order for the witch farm to operate properly but i've still got quite a bit of mess here that i need to clean up i'll take care of that between episodes and then i've got a bit of a chest monster and there's quite a bit of shulkers still in here but I wanted to show something kind of interesting I ended up picking up quite a bit of lily pads while I was constructing this uh, these aren't super useful but it's pretty rare to get them in this kind of numbers and then I got almost a full shulker box of clay from this build as well as 46 diamond ore so some pretty cool resources that I ended up collecting as part of this build 
You may have noticed from the time lapse that there were actually two people working on that witch farm. Now, I talked in my last episode about inviting another player onto the server, and that has actually happened. However, he is still working on his first video, and I want to give him a chance to introduce himself. And we've actually recorded introductions. I just want to like hold that for a little bit, let him do his first video, and then hopefully in my next video, I'll be able to link that and I'll include the introductions. But yeah, that's something to look forward to. And also, he uh, wanted to borrow some shulker boxes, and he ended up filling up half of them for me with full of sand and gravel. So that's pretty cool. That was very awfully nice of him. And also, we spent some time together. My tree farm had broken, and uh, I just needed another set of eyes. And so we worked together, and we were able to figure out how that is working which is great. So it's working now, which is fantastic because I actually went through over a shulker box of acacia logs, but now everything's working properly. So that's pretty cool. Thanks to him for helping with that. I want to introduce an idea for a long-term goal that I've been working on for a little while now. Now I've joked to myself about wanting to collect a shulker box of every item in the game, but I don't think that's a really reasonable goal. I, there's bigger channels than me that have been working on that for quite some time, and I don't believe they've gotten there yet. And so I thought it would be more reasonable to set smaller goals and like work towards those and maybe expand them as I go. So on this board here, I've got all the hostile mob drops that are in the game. And if I meet this goal, I'll probably expand this to include passive mob drops. And we can see where we go from there. And I have excluded a few items here, so I don't have the various bits of armor and bows and stuff like that. Like, those aren't really interesting. And they only stack to one, and I can easily enough make iron armor. I mean, maybe we make chainmail armor, like an interesting goal or something like that. But, you know, I've excluded from the list from now. I've also excluded the witch potions, that the, po uh, the potions that witch can drop. Um, not very interesting. Um, we can brew up whatever potion we want over there. And again, they only stack to one. It's just not that interesting of a goal. And I've also excluded mob heads because I don't think there's a reasonable way to collect 1,700 of each type of mob head. I do think it'd be fun to make a charge creeper farm. Um, and I think that'd be cool, but I don't think there's a reasonable way to make that many of those heads. Um, maybe a more reasonable goal might be a stack, so I might add that to the board at some point in time. Uh, but for now, I've excluded it. But everything else here, I think it's fairly reasonable for me to collect a shulker box of each of those items. Now my plan isn't to collect these items in the purest sense of the word. My goal is just say, hey, I had a shulker box full of each of these items at some point in time, and then just move on from that. So the criteria for taking these off the board is just that I have to show a shulker box full of the item on camera at some point in time. And then if I wanna use the item, I'm welcome to do so. I don't think there's a, a really strong reason to just like save the item like it's wrapped in its original packaging and not be able to use it. So for example, wither skeleton skulls, if I have a shulker box full of those and I show that on camera, I can then use those to make, you know, I don't need to get four shulker boxes full of wither skeleton skulls in order to make, uh, nether stars and then if i were to put up beacons on the list which i probably will at some point in time just because how cool it would it be to have a shulker box full of beacons i could then use these nether stars to make those beacons i don't think i don't really want to have to collect seven shulker boxes full of wither skulls just so that i can have a, a shulker box full of wither skulls a shulker box full of nether stars and a shulker box full of beacons and then i can't use any of those beacons i just don't that's not as much fun as just you know hey I had those items that that's cool and similarly with like shulker shells like if i have a shulker box full of shulker shells i'm gonna use those to make shulker boxes like yeah so so that's the goal in fact i'm actually gonna throw a beacon up here now because i think that'd be kind of cool and uh just as an added throw in i don't know if i'll ever meet this goal but uh, i'm gonna throw a diamond block up there because i think that'd be fun now, obviously, I have quite a few of these items already just sitting around. I mean, obviously, I had all the witch drops here. So there's those. So I'm going to knock these all off the list there. We've got ender pearls. We've got blaze rods. We've got bones. We've got wither. Uh, there's actually three. So this doesn't count. This does not count. I have to have a full shulker box full of items. So I'll have to I'll fill up the rest of this and uh, show that in a later episode. And then I'm actually gonna be a little bit lazy here and I'm gonna count this as iron. I'm gonna count this as coal and I'm gonna count both of these 
uh, this as both uh, gold nuggets and gold bars. I, I don't, again, I don't think there's a strong reason to actually make a shulker box full of those items. So let me take those down off the board. All right, I think we're off to a pretty good start. There's a few other items that I should be able to take off this list fairly easily. Um, I should have enough string. I just need to go to my mob farm and actually collect it. I just need to AFK in my guardian farm for a short while to get those two. I'd actually need to add a sorter for rotten flesh, but it shouldn't too, take too long to get that. And I can bone meal up some carrots and some potatoes. And then I can just sit at my gas farm, make sure I've got enough of those. And then some of the rest of these are actually going to be a little bit challenging. I should have the arrows as well, but I, th I think this should be pretty fun. And then when I am done with something, when I've collected something, there, I'm just going to put the item in the list in this chest here to make sure that I've, I know that I've crossed that off the list. So those are the items we've got so far, and this is what we got to go. This should be fun. A few extra rules just for clarification. I have to have a full shulker box all at a single point in time. So I can't say, hey, I've gotten enough shulker shells over the course of the game. That doesn't count. I have to have a full shulker box of shulker shells for it to count. And I have to be able to show that on screen. Also, I can't count items that can't be disassembled. So I can count gold blocks as gold ingots because you can actually craft those. I'm just being a little bit lazy but i couldn't count say sea lanterns as the crystals and the shards i couldn't count shulker boxes as shulker shells i couldn't count end crystals as uh gas tiers or anything like that because those items can't be disassembled back into those parts so just wanted to clarify those rules so I look forward to working on this and I hope you enjoy the idea. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. I want to thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again. Take it easy.